Buddy, this is Mel Allen. Baseball is in ship shape, so let's cast off. Ahoy there, mate. An Oakland destroyer cruises along peacefully in coastal waters after setting down anchor in the Bay Area. All hands on deck. The Cardinals keep watch, sinking Chicago under a full head of steam to sail a fleet course. Full speed ahead. The Red Sox launch their assault, torpedoing Toronto with a strong current, staying on top of a tidal wave. Land ho! An alert sounded by the Expos, who capsized New York to navigate their way to the top. And we're at the helm, so hop aboard, y'all, for This Week in Baseball. In Boston, the Red Sox get raves. The Red Hot Sox have been burning up the East, and when the first place Toronto Blue Jays came to town, Boston didn't cool off one bit. Dennis Oil Ken Boyd followed the Sox win in game one with a dynamite display the next day, as only the can can. Boyd gave up just one run and picked up win number eight, as the Sox rolled to their 11th win in 12 games. It was complete game number nine for the can man, most in the league. I love a complete ball game. I'm a nine-inning pitcher. Hey, if you want anybody out there, put me out there in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and I can end the ball game. When the game is in a good, fast tempo, I tend to get into the game. I start to wind it up faster. I can't find a release point, so what I do is go back there and tell myself, can slow down. The game is in your hands. One pitch at a time, one hitter at a time. Come on, let's go. The Sox did just that in game two three, winning seven to five, and maintaining a team batting average near 280, tops in the league. Glenn Hoffman hadn't been doing much socking, but in the finale, he delivered in the clutch with the two-run eighth inning single as the Sox came from behind to tie the game at six all. Boston then loaded the bases before manager John McNamara pointed to yet another hero in Dwight Evans. A sacrifice fly for the game-winning RBI. The Jays were blue all right, suffering their seventh loss in ten games. Steve Crawford got the win. The Red Sox were 10 games out of first and struggling in sixth place back on May 26th, but then won 17 out of 19, including the four-game sweep of the Jays, to soar into a tie for second. And their run wasn't done. Next night, Dwight Evans beat Detroit with a game-winning homer in the ninth, briefly giving Boston sole possession of second place, hot on the tail of the Jays. Man alive, the Sox were sizzling. Next stop, Baltimore, where the O's enjoyed an early bird special. Baltimore put out the welcome mat for returning skipper Earl Weaver, who managed the birds for more than 14 years before resigning after the 82 season. Earl missed an Oriole win in game one against Milwaukee, but saw Jim Dwyer drive in four runs at Weaver's homecoming in game two, as Baltimore made it two straight wins after five straight losses. Though earned his first major league win with nine strikeouts and in eight innings. Reggie Jackson hammered home run number 511 and two days later hit number 512 to tie for 10th place all time. American League. Cleveland's Burt Blylevin reached two milestones, beating Oakland for career win number 200 and next time out defeating California two to nothing 
for career shutout number 50. Dawson was in the stratosphere, going three for four, including home run number nine and RBI number 35, both tops on the team. Mickey Mailer was on the mark, pitching four innings of one-run ball as Montreal swept the Mets for a five-game winning streak to take over first place in the East. Next stop, Chicago, where St. Louis knocked the wind out of the Cubs. Everyone's keeping a close watch on the climbing Cardinals, who swept three games from the Cubs for a perch near the top of the East. In game one, Joaquin Andahar survived a slugfest to become the first 12-game winner in the majors. And he had just two losses. Andy Van Slyke isn't the power-hungry sort, but against the Cubs, he hit a three-run homer as the cards went wild at Wrigley with 11 runs on 15 hits. The Cubs tried to limber up for a rally with two runs in the ninth, but fell short when Van Slyke again came to the rescue, but this time in the field, as the Cards won it 11 to 10. Next day, the Cubs hoped to step into the winning picture, but instead ran their losing streak to four games. Danny Cox has been a picture of success, and against Chicago, threw a four-hit shutout for win number eight, and complete game number five, as St. Louis won two to nothing. Chicago also reeled from Cardinal offense. Here's Jack Clark connecting for home run number 14, hitting near 300. Overall, the Cards boasted a league-leading 270 team batting average. Helping to complete the sweep, Redbird Roadrunner Willie McGee sparked a 5-2 win in the finale with two RBIs, giving him 22 in 23 games. Kurt Kepshire got the win to knock Chicago out of first, and the Cubs then went on to lose three straight games to the Mets. As for the Cards, they won eight out of ten on the road to challenge for the division lead. Now, let's review this week in baseball's twib notes from around the National League. The Dodgers' Pedro Guerrero was a true blue home run hero. Just four homers in all of April and May, but then in four games, he blasted five home runs, four in a three-game sweep of Houston, and over 12 games, nine home runs and 17 RBIs. Yes, indeed, Guerrero's on the go-go. Philadelphia's Glenn Wilson is also going strong. 12 RBIs in six games, including three straight games in which he drove home three runs. What's more, Wilson has played in every game this season and was third in the league with 48 RBIs, more than he had all of last year. Hey, what's this, a costume party? Well, not quite, but it looked like one when umpires improvised their uniforms in a game at Candlestick Park between the Giants and Padres. Gag, the umpires made it to San Francisco, but their luggage didn't. Huh. Now, let's make it to the answer of this week's Nissan Quiz. Three-time Cy Young Award winner Jim Palmer won 186 games for the Baltimore Orioles during the 1970s, making him the winningest big league pitcher of that decade. Hall of Famer Juan Marichal is the man of the 1960s, winning 191 games for the San Francisco Giants. And fellow Hall of Famer Warren Spahn of the Braves was the winningest pitcher of the 50s with 202 victories. Show them your best stuff, because it's time for a game of to heave and heave not. So heave ho! Catch this, the kind of throw that can turn a skipper's hair white. But you ain't seen nothing yet, because sometimes simple throws and simple catches can seem simply impossible. So look out.
such a fine line between misplays and great plays. A throw in the wrong can become a catch in the right. So let's move from mistakes to magnificence, starting with Cleveland's Pat Tabler. New York Met, Rafael Santana. Three to get one. Houston's Joe Necro to Bill Doran to Enos Cabell. Seattle Mariner, Jim Presley. Greg Nettle, San Diego. Bill Buckner, Boston Red Sox. New York Yankee, Willie Randolph. The White Sox, Julio Cruz. On the rebound, a barehander by Wade Boggs, Red Sox. Tommy Herr, St. Louis. Another Cardinal, Terry Pendleton. Rance Mullenix, Toronto. Encore by Julio Cruz, White Sox. Detroit's Chet Lemon. Oakland's Dave Collins. Pittsburgh's George Hendrick. And Yankee Ricky Henderson over salutes Darrell Evans of the Detroit Tigers. In a win over New York, Evans went five for five, including a home run, drove in three runs, and scored three times. Evans has been on a tear for more than a month, cracking 10 of his 12 home runs and batting 350 since May 15th. Topping it all off, on his last hit of the game against the Yankees, 38-year-old Evans collected career RBI number 1,000. Congratulations, Darrell. That's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.